Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. I'm doing a whole series on how to work with Formica laminate and do projects and so forth. Uh, on another video I'll show you how to how I made this uh, waterfall uh, laminate table. This whole thing is built all completely out of laminate which is a really nice project. But on today's video segment, this segment is going to be on how you do your routering. So this is after you've um, uh, measured and cut your laminate. So here's a piece of laminate. It's got some cuts in it because this particular piece I had to rip off. And the reason why I ripped it off is because the bit that I used, which was this bit right here for the routering, this is a flush trim bit that another YouTuber recommended and you'll see that it has a one inch profile and this costs like 16 bucks on Amazon. So I purchased this one and I started doing my, my work with it and on one of my cuts this is, this is what happened. It, it actually was on this piece right here. It was on, I'll show you exactly which piece it was. It was on this inside piece right here. This, this, this one goes up underneath right there. <clears throat> I'll have links on the, uh, other videos at the, at the bottom of this uh, video so that you can see it. But uh, what happened was is that the piece the, that I did, it chafed out with, with, with this bit right here, okay, which is a, it's got a top bearing bit on it. Let me show you. Come on. So this is what it looks like. Let me pull it right out of there so you can see it. Just perfect. So it's a quarter shank and it's, it's a one inch profile and it has a top bearing. And it was like 16 bucks and, and, it's, and it's recommended for working with laminates. But on my particular project and trying to be careful and everything like that, I still uh, got this result with that bit. And this was unacceptable. I wanted perfection on my project, right? So using this bit here, which is a non-bearing flush trim, flush trim bit. It's just a flush trim bit, okay, with the, with the quarter shank, quarter inch shank. Let me pull it right out of its jacket here so you can see. This is exactly what it looks like when you, when you look at it. And then on, when I did my cuts, if I was doing a cut where the inside uh, edge had a laminate already, I would coat that with a layer of Vaseline in an effort to give it some lubrication and I've got really good results. I didn't get that same effect. So on this video, we're going to be going over uh, routering, how I'm you know, doing my routering on different pieces. So here I've got some couple of things here that I can show you behind me. Well, let me show you the router. So my router is not even a trim router. My router is a, is a full size router. It's a Ryobi one and was it three quarter? one and three quarter horsepower, but it's, it's what's called a full size router and it's got that quarter inch um, shank bodies that it can accept. Um, for doing uh, laminate work, a lot of people use trim routers. I'm just a DIYer, not a professional laminate person. So I only have one router and this is the one router that I have and I don't feel like buying another router. So, um, so I just use this one router and it's a full size router and it should do the job. It's got a, a nice big body for the platform um, for your work when you're sitting on it to get it as flat as possible so you're not, um, when you're routering, you're not, you know, at different angles or something like that. So, um, so, so the router did fine. It, you know, it's a good, it's a good router, but that's the router that you'll see in the video. And we're going to do different things. I'll show you where I did the edge banding for this pro project right here and also uh, you know putting tops on and then routering out the tops when, when you have your overhang like that. This one here is the one that I'm going to return. It's got a one inch profile and it's the one that produced that chafing on that piece that I just showed you a second ago right there on that edge. This one here is only a t uh, what they call a top bearing. So you see the bearings at, at, the, at the top. And that was like around, like I told you, like 15, 16 bucks. This one here I purchased as a kit and it came with two bits and these are two bearings, top and bottom bearing. And it even came with extra bearings 
And that whole thing was $18. So I'll leave links for all this uh, at the bottom of the video. And this is, I got it at Amazon. Now I needed, and this is an inch and a half. Now I need an inch and a half because I'm doing another project here. Okay, so here's another project that I'm doing. This is just a, a sample piece here, three quarter inch MDF with an uh, three, quarter, three quarter inch build up strip so it's a total inch and a half reveal and we want to do the edge profile instead of doing it with uh, flat stock like this here and putting that on instead of doing it with flat we want to do this one with a bull nose which means that we have to have 45 degree cuts and all this but and then this this is going to uh, go on the uh, project like this here so it's got a really nice uh, edge to it. The problem is is that my work is not 100% uh, uh, straight. So if you take as an example you take a framing square and you put it up against it like this it looks like it's real real close but I have gaps in my work at the ends here and here and those gaps are going to produce not a perfect job when I go to put on this bullnose edge. So what's happening, so what I need to do is I need to use a bit. Now I would prefer to have, uh, I have an inch and a half profile, so I'd like to have at least inch and three quarter to two inch uh, router bit to, to, to router that out with a, with a nice uh, straight cut. But because my router has only got a quarter of an inch shank, I, the, the, the biggest one I could find was just an inch and a half. Now my work is exactly inch and a half, so I might have to do it on two cuts but I'm going to um, profile this edge out to get it perfectly flat. That's not on this video, that'll be on another video. You can check out where I, we're installing bullnose edging on uh, a laminate uh, project. So, so that's that. This here is another sample piece that I made very similar to the one that's going to have the bullnose edging, but except this one has uh, flat edges installed. So uh, putting your piece on and then routering it out. In doing this particular sample, right there, you can see where I did. I got a little bit of a chafing down. I I can't remember exactly what bit that I had for this exact one, but you. This is the stuff that you're trying to avoid when you are doing your work. So I have found that in order to prevent this type of activity from happening, um, when I put my sides on and my sides are are all perfect and I'm getting I'm putting my top on and then you you've got your router bit in this case we'd want to use this bit here so you're routering like this let me show you so you're routering like this with your with your router so it's the routers going along we're gonna put Vaseline in this section here but before we do that we're going to take uh, this tape right here masking tape so we're gonna we're gonna put some masking tape around the, the corners of the project whenever you are going to have that that where you have your router bit it's going to touch um, another piece of uh, formica that you don't want damaged that's fin let's call it finished formica so when you've got finished formica and you don't and you don't want that formica damaged you want to protect it and this is the steps that we're going to take we're going to put some masking tape on the corners we're going to put that vaseline on we're not going to allow the the router to do what's called burn in which means that you're taking a router and you're just leaving it with the router on in one spot you want that router constantly moving when you're when you're routering out for your top piece so this way you don't get any burn in on your finished piece so these are all important steps that you need to take. This video is also on how you get those those perfect finished edges after you do your routering. You need to do your filing. These are all very important steps to make sure that you're doing your filing properly. Improper filing can lead to poor results. This is an example of improper filing. On this, uh, not, not, not this section right here, but between here and here, if you can see that uh, it's a little bit over filed so when I was doing my filing what I was looking for was I was trying to get it so that there was no lippage like this so when I was doing my filing I brought the file down at too much of an angle down like this 
and I just kept filing and filing and filing and then that's when uh, I overfiled and you can see right here what you'll start to burn into your your finished edge on your Formica so you want to file to get rid of the edge but you don't want to overfile so it's um, it takes a little bit of practice it's it's not uh, you know not too too bad but you just have to put a little bit of practice into it in order to get it just right so as an example when I did this so I did these sample pieces like this one here this is just a 12 by 12 square you know just to get some uh, to get some uh, some experience myself because I'm fairly I'm new to for Michael laminate myself so when before I moved on to this project here because I really wanted this project to be perfect so on this one here there's a little bit of lippage there so I filed it down so when you run your finger across it you really can't feel any lippage but if I use a tool like this or a putty knife like this one see how it kind of it, it hits that edge because there's still a little bit of an edge there I didn't file it so that this edge is completely flush with this here because I did not want to produce that same over filing that you saw in this sample piece right here so I was very careful and cautious on my filing so you don't want to get to the very last stage of your project which is the filing and then ruin your piece because you over filed so you it's a delicate balance of how much and what that edge should look like and everything like that so you want to take uh, caution and care in in that very important last step before you clean your project so it's ready for service um, now when you when I did my uh, filing I have different uh, files starting with a very fine file going up to a very coarse uh, file over here so we, we go like, like you know, from, from very fine up to coarse if there's a lot of material to take off I may use the heavy coarse file but then I'll just step it down to the very fine files to, to get the edge this, this particular file here was the one that I used uh, for the finished filing on, on most projects and it, it's nothing special it's just a fine file a fine mill file and it it works fine it's probably about 12 inches in length and it I had absolutely no issue with it so so any standard filing set that has different milling uh, coarsenesses to it would be acceptable for your filing but again very important step okay so it's the next day our piece is set up overnight and it wasn't necessary but I didn't feel like doing this cut last night so I brought my workbench just outside here because I didn't want to when you do the routering it's a there's a bunch of shavings that are gonna come on the ground and I just wanted it to be outside rather than inside uh, I have the depth of my blade set so this way it's exactly uh, I'm going to use this particular bit the non bearing bit and you'll see that when you're cutting a piece of um, laminate here's a piece of laminate you'll see how that is going exactly about halfway on on the on the blade so I've got the depth set on my router to cut like that so we're going to go ahead and do this cut right now and when I do the cut I'm going to do the cut nice and slow and I'm going to go counterclockwise
All right, so here's an inspection of the piece that we just did, and the the cuts came out really good. I haven't even filed this yet, but I mean, it's so there's like practically no lippage going on here. Just to kind of show you, there's like no lippage, just as is. But I'll still take a file and uh, and just run that real gentle. Now, once one section here where my wood had a chip in it from well, when I built the box I must have I had a chipped corner right there so the when I was running my router it did gouge very s s slightly see that little small gouge right there and that was because the wood was depressed underneath I could have filled that in before to make sure that the router um, ran over it smoothly so on your finished pieces that's something to look out for you can see that my build-up strip had a seam right there I would have probably been better off on my build-up strips if I had done 45 degree corners rather than the way that I built it and that way it may have been uh, it would have it would have ran off the edges smoothly and you wouldn't have had that transition so maybe I'll do my build-up strips differently in the future with 45s here rather than the way that I did it Okay, I got my workpiece ready to go, router ready to go. I got the piece clamped down so it's not going to move on me to my temporary workbench. Let's get right to this routering. Okay, now that we are routered out here, what I'm going to do is I've got a block of uh, sanding, uh, just a 2x3 with some 80 grit paper here. And I know that this was really rough, especially right here in this section. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand that down. And then I'll just take a file. And just and using a downward sweeping motion, make sure that I get this good. It's okay for me to check this against here to see if this how much lippage we have. And there's a little bit of lippage there. It's not terrible, but there's definitely some lippage. So let me just try to flatten that out and make it nice and perfect. So here's a close up of what those edge profiles look like. And telling you these look really good so I'm basically I did those two sides right there with the sanding and filing I'm just gonna continue this one and then do the same thing on those three sides there alright so here's the router that we're going to use which is a, a Ryobi uh, full size router and here's a bit which is basically just a flush trim bit with a bearing. I'll leave a link for everything. But, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some glue residue from, from my jobs that I was doing in, the, in, the, in the, the past here. So I want to clean that off. So that same paper towel that I had with the um, trying to get the glue residue off of the laminate surface, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my bit because I don't want any glue residue to be on this um, before I start my, my routering. So I'm just going to make sure that I have a nice clean bit uh, for the job.
everything came out pretty good except which is a big except I actually the the router bit chewed into this piece of laminate right here and that took off some of the some of the edging on me so this is just a sample piece for me but if this had been a you know production a production piece let me tell you how oh boy how upset I'd be so this side over here came out perfect uh, when you look at this side here there is absolutely no chafing now when I was doing the the router on this section I was pushing it away from me and then I came across and I was pulling it towards me now, I don't know if pulling it towards me is why it did that it it sure produced a real I mean the edge is so fine here that like as as you know you, as you can see but we don't want our final product looking like this there is uh, possibly a small amount of lippage here see how that's hitting there so my putty knife kinda uh, just shows you how very very you know uh, 1 64th of an inch of an overhang here uh, but there's but it doesn't take the laminate off which is the the part you're trying to protect and over here it did so I, we still have to do the other side so we have a couple of choices here I have another bit that we could use uh, that m possibly may work better than this one did um, for this inside piece here um, and that may be <coughs> where we start off with or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some use the same bit that I have here, but I'm going to put tape uh, along this edge here to to keep to to whatever the thickness of the tape is to step that out a little bit to prevent that from happening because I don't want that. That looks that's not the look I'm going for. This over here is the look that I am going for. Okay. Okay. This is the bit that we used for the project right here, flush trim with the bearing. We're going to use this flush trim bit, but it has no bearing. All right, here we go. I put the Vaseline on both sides, router bits ready to go, and I got the piece clamped down. We'll start over here. Alright, there you go. It looks really, really good. It did not chafe that piece. So, this bit is working better, much better, because it did not chafe that piece there. So, we are, that looks, that's a nice clean, that's a nice clean uh, cut right there, okay? So, I'm just going to double check my bit. Uh, make sure there's no contact adhesive on here. There's a little bit. I'll just clean it up one one more time. All right, the piece came out really good uh, with what the work we've done so far. I'm just going to take some paint thinner and a uh, paper towel here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean off all the uh, the glue edges and uh, Vaseline and stuff like that that I had all the way around, just to make sure that the piece is uh, uh, good. And then we'll file it down, and then and then we're we should be good. Okay, here's what the piece looks like so far, and it came out pretty good. This is the side where I used the non-bearing uh, flush trim bit here and here, 
the and I inspected it real close and I got one chip out it's just above my fingernail oh baby it's very small I can see it in person because I'm in I'm inspecting the piece but if you were just a casual viewer from this distance you can't see it now let's flip the piece over here's the other side that has the bearing flush trim bit this side came out okay this side over here obvious obvious where the bearing tore in uh, not the bearing but the router uh, tore into that piece of formica this is just a sample piece for myself it's not I'm not selling this to a client or anything but if I was this would be uh, unacceptable no way would that pass this piece would have to come out and be uh, redone um, which would be a major setback to the project. Okay, now that our corners are protected, I'm going to take some Vaseline and put it on the Formica to protect this edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and lubricate this side here anywhere where there's where it's going to be running where there's Formica. Here it's not not critical, but here it is critical. So I'm going to go ahead and just get some Vaseline as a lubricant to put there. Then we're going to go ahead and flip this and do the same thing on this side. Okay, I've got the piece clamped down. The router bit is clean and everything's ready to go. So we're going to start routering this piece right now. All right, now I'll take my sanding block and not where the Formica is, but on the top and bottom edges, I'll go ahead and put some sanding down. Okay, let me go ahead and pull off the uh, tape. See how we stand. Let me go ahead. Okay, we're J roller down, our ends are taped, and we're just about ready to uh, start routering the project. I'm going to take some Vaseline and I'm going to go around the entire project and put the Vaseline right here so it can lubricate, so it's lubricated. Now we're going to start cleaning up our edge. Make sure we're recording here. Uh, I got some, my paint thinner and a green uh, greenie pad, and I'm just going to put some paint thinner on there and 
clean this glue residue that's oozed over around the top. cleaned up. Now there's a little bit of lippage here. Not bad, but we want to take a file and we'll use this one. Well, here you go. This is the first waterfall table I ever made. This is the completed project. I'm going to show you all angles and give you some close-ups right now. Looking at your joints here. Look at how nice those those uh, cuts are. Those router marks are. There's, that's a there's a little, I can see a little bit of glue residue there. And I tried to use a greeny pad with some uh, paint thinner. Maybe acetone would be a little bit better to clean this up with. But that's really not bad. It's, that's because I'm I'm zooming in with the 40 to 1 zoom. Come back here, it, you, it's like you don't even you can't even see it. I actually had a hard time seeing it when I was up there. I could continue cleaning this out, but oh, there's that uh, joint there. You, like I told you, I got it pretty damn good, but uh, it's a little off, only because I had to cut it to fit rather than router it in. But, hey, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this table. Okay, that's going to conclude this video. Please click on like. I need those likes. And subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I'm going to catch you on the flip side.